Let's talk about depth. What's going on Pro EDU community? It's Dustin Falkema. And today we're talking about how to add atmospheric perspective to our 3D renders using the Z-Depth Pass. Now, this render pass is super powerful for a lot of different things. And in the last video, we talked about how to add a nice depth of field to our 3D renders using the Z-Depth. But there is also a lot we can do with depth that doesn't have anything to do with focus specifically. So today we're going to take a look at atmospheric perspective and how that can really adjust and manipulate the look of our images. All right, here we are in Photoshop taking a look at a render here. That's a very simple kit bash scene. And we're just going to be taking a look at how we can add atmospheric perspective here using the Z-Depth Pass. So if we go ahead and turn this layer on for the Z-Depth, you'll see that we have plenty of information from our foreground to our background. So these black to white values, which are going to help us out quite a bit in creating different layer masks. Now, I am rendered or currently working in a 16-bit sRGB. If you're working in something like a 32 float linear image, you're going to have quite a bit more information to push and pull out of this pass than we are. And if you happen to be using 8-bit, you'll be using quite a bit less information than we have here. Now, if we go ahead and with the Z-depth selected here and visible on top of everything else, we'll control or command click our blue channel we can save that selection as an alpha, and then we'll just re rename this to Z here in our channels panel, RGB. We can go ahead now and just hide our Z depth pass. And with this selected currently, we can go ahead down to our adjustment layers and we'll start off with a solid color. This is actually what I use most often when I'm doing this type of work. And to start here, let's go ahead and create something maybe like a a dusty yellow orange type of look. Go ahead and click OK. And now at this point, if we go ahead and select our Z depth layer mask here, we can use curves. So Control or Command M. And this is going to allow us to adjust the values and really push that atmospheric perspective further forward or further towards the background. Now we can go ahead and just click cancel here a moment. And at this point, what we'll do is go ahead and hide our color fill and we can go ahead and create a curves adjustment layer. We can alt our option and control or command click to drag this layer mask for our Z depth up to the curves channel or the curves layer here. And now with this, we can go ahead and start to adjust these points on our curves, these black points as we start to get further back into our scene. We can go ahead and adjust. Let's alter option, click our layer mask here. And we can see that we have the brightest whites towards the back of our scene. So if we use maybe levels this time, so control or command L to bring up levels, and we'll just start to adjust these values here a little bit and bring these over so that we'll start being able to implement a little bit more of that atmospheric perspective into our foreground or closer to now we are going to see some of the banding here and that's primarily because of the color space that we're using. We don't have quite as much information. So I'm not going to focus so much on that, but we'll just pull this effect here a little bit further forward. Go ahead and click OK. We can click right back onto our curves here to start making some adjustments. Now turning this off and on, you're able to see immediately how the lack of contrast is really starting to push our eyes visually forward here a little bit into the shadows. And so we could really put anything here that we wanted as far as subject matter is concerned. And this is going to help really start to push some of the focus in our scene. Now, we can also implement colors. So inside of our curves here, if we go ahead and press Alt 3, or option three, we're going to enter the red channel. We can also use this drop down here. So you can see that Alt three, Alt four, Alt five are really handling our RGB values or individual channels. And then Alt two is our RGB channel to handle everything as far as luminosity there. Now, what we can do is go ahead and take these midtones and we can start to adjust these values and we can see the way that those are really starting to impact the scene. We can also take some of these points here and adjust the black point on each of these individual channels 
and we can get various different effects. So curves for me is definitely one that I'll use most often. If we go ahead and reset our curves here, this is really going to give us a fairly good base overall is a way to really start manipulating a lot of the light and the focus that we have in our scene. So we can go ahead and obviously decrease our black point. And now we're going to start really getting contrasting results as we start to move further back into our scene. So it's pretty simple at its core. It's just again using the Z-depth pass in a little bit different of a manner than specifically focusing on depth of field. Now, one of my favorite ways to really work with and manipulate these different effects is to actually work with quite a few of them in combination with one another. So for instance, we can go ahead and take our curves and move that back up here. We'll go ahead and change the color of this color fill and we'll maybe make it something a little bit, yeah, sure. We'll make that a little bit more of a cyan green-ish hue here. And with our curves, we can go ahead and bring this up just a bit. Bring down the opacity on the back layer here for the color fill. Now at this point, one of my favorite things to actually do here is introduce texture. And so one of the easiest ways to do that is just to use a smoke overlay. And so once we pull a smoke overlay in, now I know that this isn't really to scale with the scene or anything like that. This is just a little bit more so that you can see these type of effects and, and what they look like. Now, at this point, we'll go ahead and just control our command, click our Z channel here, and then we'll again create a layer mask on the smoke layer. Now, immediately, we'll see that everything starts to get pushed further into the background. We can also take this now and maybe mo move this directly below our curves layer here so that these curve values are really starting to affect the smoke. And what we'll do is we can alt our option click for our smoke overlay and that layer mask there. And we can just use our levels again and really start to push the effect of the smoke overlay forward. So we'll just brighten up the midtones here. Go ahead and click OK. Click back into our primary thumbnail here. And now we're really starting to see the way that this smoke or this texture is really starting to play a part in the scene. So along with this, again, we can just go ahead and decrease our opacity a bit here. That's going to give us a little bit more information from the cyan-ish color that's happening behind here. And I haven't yet changed the blend mode of this smoke. And that's something that I actually do quite often is just leave this at normal and I'll adjust the opacity as needed once I get that Z depth layer mask implemented. Now from this point, if we wanted to, we could go ahead and make this screen. We could go a little bit in the opposite direction, darken things by putting this on a multiply layer. It doesn't really matter the way that you do this specifically, it's just going to give you quite a bit different look or effects as we start to move through different blend modes. Now, again, we'll go ahead and just leave this at normal. We can head up to our curves. We can start to make some color adjustments here. So we'll select something maybe like the green channel, introduce a little bit more green to this. We can head into our blue channel, introduce a little bit more yellow maybe get a little bit psychedelic with it. Now, one of the things that we can actually do here as well is maybe head into the red channel and really start to boost some of the reds and get kind of a, a crazy post-apocalyptic type of look. And the cool part about this is because these are all on their own layer mask, now we can go and start to adjust the way that each one of these is working with the rest of the scene here. So if we go ahead on the color fill layer, Controller Command L, we can brighten this up and really start to push this effect towards the foreground. And we can see the way that this is all working together. Go ahead, we can click cancel. Now, one of the other ways that I'll work with this every now and then is actually stacking all of these effects into a single group. So we can control our command, hold G, stick this into a group, and we can just maybe go ahead and actually delete all of these layer masks here. 
and get a little bit craziness here for a moment. And then we can control, control our command click, our Z depth pass on this group, and we can create our own layer mask here. And now with all of these various passes or these layers here combined, we can go ahead now and control our command L and we can start to adjust the way that this effect is working from our foreground to our background, again, using the Z depth pass. And it's all pretty easy and it works out quite well. Now, the best part about working with it this way is that we do have the option now for all of these layers underneath to go ahead and create their own layer mask. So something like this smoke that's clearly creating this box or this harsh line here, we can go ahead and just use its own layer mask with a soft round black brush here. And we can go ahead and remove those visual artifacts from the rest of our environment. And it all works out pretty well here just based on this single layer mask that we have on the overall group. All right, now that wraps up the basics on how to use the Z-Depth Pass for Atmospheric Perspective in Photoshop. At its core, it's very easy. Similar to what we did in the last video, we're using it as an alpha channel to then use as a layer mask for various different effects. Now, it creates a really nice depth from the foreground to the background of your scene, just like atmospheric perspective really would with the way that light scatters throughout the atmosphere, impacting the hue, saturation, and contrast from the depth that you have in your environment. Now, there are different ways that we can go about things like color grading using the Z-Depth Pass, and so we'll talk about that in another video. Now, until then, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Never stop learning. I'll see you guys there.